Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to 2021. We are so excited that 2020 is over. We are ready just to kick off this new year. So we just had an amazing last couple weeks out in Colorado doing some great, amazing outdoor activities in the winter time. And we're gonna kind of share some of those with you um, in this video and how you can create some of those lasting memories for you and your family as well. Yeah, we went into this couple of weeks really determined and ready to have a good time and make those memories because we barely ever see our daughter as she's going to college right now. And we hadn't seen our son all year because of COVID and everything going on with that. So um, we were determined and we did. We made some amazing memories. So guys, if you're new to our channel, we're embracing this next chapter by simplifying our lives, exploring our dreams, and connecting with the things and people that truly matter. In this video, we're gonna share with you some ways that we created some really lasting memories and some amazing adventures. And we're hoping that you can kind of get some ideas or maybe some inspiration on how you can you know, do this yourself or maybe as a couple or maybe with your whole family. So stay tuned to the end of this video because we're gonna provide you with the ways in which we have created just amazing adventures, some lasting memories you know, throughout our entire uh, marriage as a couple and also with our family as our kids were growing up. So we're going to start off with number five is planning and with COVID um, usually I'm not much of a planner but I had to do some research and planning on what places were open, doing dine-in, maybe patio dining, different things like that to really um, hopefully reduce the frustration levels of going to places and realizing they're closed or not operating right now. So I was really um, proactive in doing more research for that. Yeah, but I think the one thing to remember too, if you're somebody that really likes to plan, like down to the details, like hour by hour, like checklist type of stuff, this is something I'm gonna caution you is you really have to be flexible and you have to allow uh, time in your, in your planning for spontaneity. And I'll give you a really good example. So when our kids were really little, we did the whole Disney World thing. We took them down to Florida and you know, we, we were gonna give them the whole Disney World and Universal Studios experience. And, you know, and me as a planner, I was like, okay, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna hit all the parks in these days and we're gonna hit all these rides. And I had things really planned out in detail and to the point where I was almost frustrating the family because we were running from thing to thing trying to stay on my neatly planned schedule and I didn't make time for just stopping and enjoying the magic that, that is Disney World. And one of the biggest memories that our daughter has in that area, our daughter just totally off the script was sitting around waiting for my son and I to get off a ride and she started messing around with Goofy, you know, the guy dressed up like Goofy. And they started playing around and you know she was jumping on Goofy's back and Goofy was playing with her. And this probably went on for about 20 minutes. And through all my planning and all the great things and the exciting you know things that I thought our kids were experienced, Probably our daughter's most amazing, you know, memory from that is just that spontaneous moment she had playing with Goofy that was unscripted, it was playful, and it totally wasn't on my radar. So the thing I learned from that trip is that loosely, loosely plan, have a plan, you know, going into some things, but leave time for spontaneity, leave time for to be able to stop on the side of the road and, you know, see one of those attractions or the kids see something that, you know, strikes their curiosity and you have the time to go and look at and check that thing out. Yeah, you've definitely gotten a lot better over the years at remembering yeah. that it's more about the journey than it is about the destination for sure. Yeah, and I think on this, this trip specifically, we planned like one event a day and then we left tons of free time and free space in the schedule for just whatever may happen. And the other thing that's important too is then that allows your kids to get involved in the whole vacation and planning process. Um, and, and it feels like they're a part of it. So you don't want to over plan or, or have this, you know, hour by hour checklist of everything the family's going to do. That's a little bit, you know, too much. And, and I think you need to leave some time and space in there mm -hmm. for that spontaneity and that creativity and for your kids to really get involved in the, in the journey as well.
before we move on to the next one, we just want to explain to you a little bit of why it's so important, especially if you have kids, to create these lasting memories that are positive. Um, it actually, research shows that it helps with children's brain development and it helps with things like their memory and, you know, their cognitive growth. Research has actually shown that it helps reduce stress and anxiety and it helps reduce the chance of having mood disorders and it just helps uh, people be more optimistic overall. Yeah, and there's also a lot of research that says that if somebody has negative experiences or trauma in their background, creating these lasting positive experiences actually overwrites those negative experiences, the trauma, and as children grow up and get older, they, they fall back and they remember those positive memories that they had in their childhood or growing up or even as adults with us, um, and then they draw on those in times of stress, in times of um, pain, in times of, you know, when they're dealing with difficult things in life, they can draw on those memories and it actually helps them to overcome those, those times and experiences in life um, better when they have these type of lasting memories that they can dig and grab into. Okay, so number four, um, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a, I'm a very serious and a little bit more logical guy, but I've realized that you've got to be playful. Um, even, you know, our kids are adults now, they're, you know, 20 and 22 years old, but we still have to, you know, remember to be a little bit playful and goofy with them and that life isn't always serious and logical and just, you know, we have to be these, you know, we just have to be lighthearted sometimes. So. You know, on this on this adventure, we just did some goofy things, and and you know, when your kids are little, it's just stuff like, you know, getting down on the floor and playing with them, or you know, we used to do stuff like, you know, dad was the elephant or whatever, and everybody would ride on my back or whatever. But you want to create these experiences as well, um, you know, when you're going out and doing things. So on this journey, uh, it snowed like crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> for about two days straight, and uh, my daughter just. <laughs> I uh, had the idea of going outside and playing in the snow, and we ended up making an amazing snowman. And <laughs> she's like 20 years old, and well, I'm in my 40s, but we just played like kids, and it was it was awesome. Yeah, and the other <laughs> thing too is just uh, like you know having a playful heart and just you know things like let's go sledding or let's go tubing. <laughs> so being a little less serious and goofy and having a playful heart, it really adds to those experiences and it creates the atmosphere where everybody lightens up and everybody gets, um, you know, a little bit more playful and excited. I don't know if you've ever been on, you know, been somewhere with somebody where everybody's just serious and stiff and, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like an insurance convention or something <laughs> like that. But it's not very fun. Even though we're adults, even though we're grown up, you kind of just have to say, okay, we're going to be goofy. We're going to let loose. We're going to let our hair down and have some fun mm -hmm. because that's what really creates, you know, some of those amazing experiences. <laughs> yeah, for ice skating too. Um, instead of just doing the round and around, you know, like we can do it, but we ended up, the kids ended up having those little guard things that made it a lot more fun and they're racing around and I think they even got in trouble on, sitting on them and stuff. But hey, that adds to the memories. Yeah, that's yeah. Pretty that's the best part of making the memories, right? <laughs> yeah. So bottom line, guys, just remember, be lighthearted, be playful. Everything doesn't have to be, you know, just this serious, logical thing that you're doing. You can be funny and goofy mm -hmm. and have a good time because that, you know, just creates that, that funny atmosphere and everybody has a really good time when you do that. Number three, taking time to notice the little things. So especially when your kids are little, they're going to have that sense of wonder and just taking that time to go to that place with them. Admiring that rock that they're showing you or that bug or insect is so huge. It sounds like it's not, but it really is. It creates lasting memories. Yeah, so back in 2011, I took both kids up. We went and, and we uh, stayed for about a week up in Mount Rainier. We climbed Mount Rainier, went up to the glaciers and stuff like that. And there was a time, you know, I wanted to go hike. I wanted to go, you know, do all the stuff you do at Mount Rainier. But my kids were so fascinated by the river. And so my kids ended up making these two little boats out of like sticks and leaves. And they, for, you know, probably like two or three hours, were racing, you know, their little boats down the river. And I just let them go off and play and they were you know wandering around the wilderness just enjoying nature and they remember that experience to this day they remember we remember the name the names of their boats um and things like that and that was all again you know going back to what we talked about with planning that was spontaneous that was something just the kids creativity in the moment and i realized that and we just said we're gonna let the you know i'm gonna let the kids just just go with this and have fun because they're they're off in their own little world and that created a memory without even trying. I think it's really important to notice each other and notice the emotional reactions that are happening with your kids or your loved ones. For example, I remember um, a lot of times we pass up, you know, pass by homeless people and stuff and I, I noticed my son in the back seat, he was very 
moved when he saw a homeless man that ha had been outside of a grocery store for weeks and weeks. And he just felt compelled and moved to give to this man all of his savings. And, you know, that might have been <laughs> a lecture time for some parents, but I could tell in his heart it really was his time to give to this man and it ended up being a wonderful experience it moved this homeless man to tears and my son still talks about that um to this day you know the time that he just felt in his heart to give and he did that and you know that was a really positive memory yeah and i think for us you know you know we were busy doing stuff and it would have been easy for us to just overlook this homeless man or to just tell our son you know hey Whatever, it's just a homeless guy, don't worry about it. But we realized in that moment that our, for some reason this, you know, our son felt compelled. And we just kind of went with Wit and we let him take the lead. And he got to have this amazing experience. And it actually, that was kind of one of the first things that led to, you know, just a, a whole lifetime of our son giving and serving others and, and being involved with, with helping other people. Um, and it was just because we realized in that moment, we just need to take time and we need to let him you know, do what he's feeling called to do in that moment. So. Okay guys, number two. If you've been watching our channel for a while, this should not come as a surprise for you, but you want to create adventures. Um, you want to have, you know, kind of that adventure lifestyle and not just be the same old boring routine all the time. You know, we try to do this on a daily basis every single weekend. Get out, have an adventure, enjoy life, enjoy nature, enjoy, you know, the people around us and just treat every day as a gift and get out and do it. And, and Jenny, you guys had a great experience of you and our daughter oh, um, sure. a couple years ago. Do you want to share that? Yes, it was. It was an amazing experience. Our daughter, she had just graduated from high school and she was going into college. She was learning to, you know, to make her own decisions. And she, uh, well, we were moving um, from the East Coast to the West Coast at that time. And so it was just my daughter and I. And most people would, you know, you're traveling from one coast to the other, would take the least amount of time, you know, straight across. She had planned all these special destinations, and I'm glad I went with it. It probably took twice as long, if not longer, to get there, but it was so worth it. We stopped in Nashville, learned a line dance. Flying helicopters <laughs> in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and, um, and we went to New Orleans, and we went kayaking in the bayou with all the alligators. and um, It was just an amazing adventure. I wouldn't change it for the world, and it was super special because this was right before she went to college and I'm glad that we t I took that time with her um, probably one of my best memories yeah and I think one of the biggest things too is that you know Jenny really let our daughter plan that whole trip <laughs> plan the destinations and not all of it worked out sometimes they ended up in some you know sketchy places but <laughs> other times they ended up in some pretty amazing places but you know it was really empowering for our daughter especially because Jenny you let her take the lead you let be a part of the planning process. Let me. She planned it out yeah. um, and really found some amazing, cool places, uh -huh. you know, along that adventure. And I think it's one of those adventures and those road trips she's going to remember for the rest of her life. And number one, being grateful. You know, as you're creating these memories, just make that a part of your DNA. Being thankful and grateful for every moment. Um, I know 2020 was really rough for a lot of you, and it was really rough on us too. Um, you know, we were looking back on 2020 reflecting and there were so many things that we talked about but we ended it you know on new year's eve with a cheers on how blessed we are and how thankful we are that we had these two weeks together just making that you know part of our dna to be grateful yeah and i think there's also ways you can create memories and experiences and adventures where you're teaching um, your kids or you're involved in something that, that's you know making you feel grateful. One of the things we did with our kids from a very early age when they were in middle school kind of going into high school is for a number of years we volunteered every winter um, for something that was basically like a homeless shelter so the they would bring the homeless people into some of the local churches and then you know we would just serve them for the week that they were there we would give them a warm bed let them take showers give them meals and just spend some time with them 
and have conversation and listen to their stories. And our kids were a part of that. Our kids got to go and they got to serve these people. They got to listen to their stories and hear from these people that were, you know, in a, in a rough spot of their life. And they heard stories of people just saying, you know, I'm grateful that I have a warm bed tonight. I'm just grateful that I have a warm meal. Mm -hmm. And that had a huge impact on our kids of just making them see, you know, all the things that we have and how blessed we are um, with, with what we have. Um, so it really, you know, made a big impact on them and that kind of shaped them. It, and I think the biggest thing was is it got their eyes off themselves and off being selfish and kind of everything's about me. And it got them looking outward at other people and how can I help other people? How can I help the world? How can I make this a better place? And it really got them, you know, not focused on themselves and that selfishness, but on being other oriented. And that kind of created a whole culture of our kids serving and volunteering. And that led through, you know, throughout their teen years and now into their early 20s of them volunteering, uh, helping other people in need. And it just creates that entire atmosphere. And that all comes from that, that sense of gratitude and realizing that we need to be grateful for what we have and you know how can we bless other people with the things that we've been given. Yeah, on that note, um, maybe you're not able right now in your life to just have that epic adventure or something, but maybe instead you can look into the community for, I mean, there's a lot of need out there. Maybe you could, you know, as a family, help at the you know food bank or I don't know, there's a lot of faith-based places that you know help groups of homeless people like we did um, it's really amazing what it does to you and and your children it gets you more other oriented it's just it brings you a lot of joy to be serving others I mean that's what it did for us yeah and I think there's there's tons of opportunities to volunteer and, and you just really have to seek those out and especially doing those as a couple or as a family mm -hmm. It really, I think it enriches a relationship and really it, it creates that DNA, like you yeah. said, of, of just gratitude and serving and helping others. Mm -hmm. And these are things you can do right now. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You just really go sign up and say, hey, I want to help, especially during COVID, especially during the pandemic. There's a lot of areas, a lot of places you could probably go in and help out. And that creates those lasting memories. Mm -hmm. um, so you sometimes you just have to be creative and you have to look you know, outside the box to find those areas. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe. And what we want you to do is comment below on maybe one of your favorite memories as a family or individually, or maybe ways you've helped your community or others. Um, and just kind of include in the comment what made it so amazing and memorable for you. Yep, stay crazy guys.